What's going on everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today we are making football jigs. So I'm going to show you how to make two different football jigs using my duet molds. Um, one's my stand-up football head and one of them is going to be my standard football head. Um, I'm going to make some brown and black jigs. Those are my favorite color. I throw that color just about everywhere. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's other good jig colors out there, but that's the one we're going to be making today is a brown and black round rubber jig. So let's get started. Let's make these jigs. Okay, so as you can see, we got two different molds here. This is the stand-up football jig mold, or at least that's what I call it. You can see that flat side on the back side of the jig. That's what's gonna help it stand up. And here is your standard football jig. That's just the round football head style. This mold right here, you can put two different style hooks in it. One can have a vertical line tie and another one can have a horizontal line tie. So those are the hooks that we're gonna be using today. It's a three aught owner deep throat flip and pitch hook. Uh, I like this hook a lot and you'll see what it looks like a little bit better outside the package here in a second. So there's that hook outside of the mold, kind of a unique style, but I really like it in these jigs. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do for these jigs is put the hooks inside the mold. So we're gonna make four jigs at a time. We're gonna make one half ounce and one three eighth ounce in both of the molds. This one actually goes only up to a half ounce. So I gotta move those around. So this is this is the three eighths right here and this is gonna be the half ounce. The stand up football jig goes up to a three quarter ounce but we're just gonna make the three eighths and the half as well. So we got both of our hooks in there and the next thing we're gonna do is put our base hole pins right here. So that way we have the hole in the in the jig once the lead's poured so we can put our weed guard in there. So one of the things I really like about this stand-up football jig mold is the keeper that you can put in there. Um, that keeper right there goes right inside the mold, just like so. And we'll do it on the uh, 3 8 ounce as well. Get that guy in there. So I really like that keeper. It helps keep your trailer on nice and snug. And then we're gonna take some base hole pins and that's what these are right here. These are base hole pins and you put those in just like so. And that's gonna leave you the hole that you're gonna wanna have inside your jig so that way you can put a weed guard in there nice and easily. So what we're gonna do now is just close up our molds. And one thing I like to do is make sure it's all flush along the top so that way you know everything is in its position correctly and you're not gonna have flashing when you pour your jigs. So we'll get this other one closed up as well. Make sure it's nice and flush, as, and it is. Next step is gonna be pouring the lead into these molds. So our lead is already nice and hot. All we gotta do is just put our mold underneath of our pot, just like so, and get the lead out, pour it in, pour it in and then we're good to go. So this is gonna be our standard football jig. So we're gonna pour the lead in right here and then pour the lead in right there. Let those cool down and we should have four nice looking jigs inside of those molds. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is open up our molds to check out our jigs. And let's see what those ones look like. Those ones turned out really well. Let's open up our next one. See how those turned out. Those look like they turned out really well too. A little close up. Next thing we're gonna do is take them out of our mold and get them cleaned up before we paint them. Okay, so when you pour lead stuff, you always end up getting this top part, which is called the sprue. All you gotta do is just cut it off just like that. We're gonna do it on each of these. Just cut it off. Cut it off cut it off. And what I like to do is I like to just take this file and you just file these jigs down so that way they're nice and smooth and you don't have that little leftover from the sprue. And it's just nice and flat, just like that. Do it on the last two. And this last one. So the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure there's no lead in the eyelet. So like this one right here looks really good. That one's good. This one's good. 
that one's good as well so these are now ready to get painted okay so that's what your jigs are going to look like before you go and paint them you want to leave those base hole pins in there while you paint because it's going to leave that opening nice and clean for when you go to put your weed guard in so what i like to use to heat up my lead in order to paint them is a heat gun you just turn it up on high and i count to probably i don't know like 20 a 20 count you know for the half ounce and maybe a 15 ounce 15 count for the 3 8 ounce and then you just dip it into your powder paint and make sure that it's a nice smooth coating and you're good to go before you bake so let's get these painted up and i'll show you that process so today i'm using protec powder paint this is actually a mixture of a brown and black it's just a little bit of black i just like the for my own jigs that I make myself, I like to kind of dabble with mixing the paints up. So it kind of just gives me a really dark brown look, which kind of matches that brown and black round rubber that I'm gonna be using. So this, this process is the same whether you mix the paints or just use the paint exactly how it is out of the container. So if you're using the powder paint right out of the container, you definitely wanna shake it up and get it nice and loose in there. There's something called a fluid bed, which I have made myself that you can use. And it's definitely beneficial when you're gonna be making a lot of jigs at one time because it keeps that paint nice and loose so you don't have to shake it up every once in a while. So what I like to do is just grab the jig by the hook shank, just like that. And then I'm gonna walk over to the heat gun. And all you do is just Keep this jig right over the top of the heat. I like to rotate it back and forth so I get a nice even heat on my jig. And then you just leave it there. For this one, I'm gonna give it around a 15 count, maybe 15 seconds, 10, 15 seconds, something like that. And then we're gonna take our paint, swirl this around inside like that, get rid of the extra. And then that's our finished jig. The hook eye did get covered up, so we're gonna have to clean that out before we put this into bake. Those were the stand-up jigs. This is gonna be the half ounce standard jig. And I'm gonna do the same thing, just put it over the heat. Dip it in. Knock off the extra. And that's the final look to it. And then one thing I like to do is I you definitely wanna take the base hole pin out right away so that way it doesn't get stuck in there that way you have that nice hole for the weed guard so the next thing i'm going to do in the process is clean out these eyes on these jigs this one's probably okay but i'm going to open it up a little bit more and what you do is you basically you take this little tool right here i don't remember what it's called but you can get it on the do it mold website i'll put a link in the description of the video but you just basically put the eye of the hook through the hole right here like that and you just push down and you basically just clean out those hook eyes so that way you don't have any issues when you go to put your line on and tie that jig onto your line. So that's the cleaned out version of it. That hook eye is much more wide now. So for these stand-up jigs, you can't use the same tool to clean out the hook eyes. So what I like to use is an old hook that I can just kind of bring through the hook eye right here and open that back up. Or like I'm gonna do right now is I have this spinnerbait wire form and I'm just gonna take this long end and put it through the hook eye. Just try to shove it through there, just like that. And now I have the hook eye opening and then I'm also gonna clean it out a little bit more just to get that opening just a little bit bigger. And just like that. So all four of our jigs are painted and now they are ready to bake. And the reason you wanna bake these is because it's gonna harden that paint and make it much more durable. All I use to paint my jigs is this toaster oven and you just literally just hang these on the grate inside there like this. Some people have fancy ways of doing it so that way the jigs aren't upside down because they're afraid that the paint is going to have a little drop on the top of it. But if you don't over paint your jigs, you shouldn't have any issues. Now we're just going to close this up. We're going to go over to our timer and I like to do it for 20 minutes and it's set for about 400. You could probably get away with 
350, but I always go 400 and I haven't had any problems. So now we just wait for those jigs to get painted up and nice and hard and then once that timer goes off and you hear the buzz or whatever you want to let them cool down a little bit because they will be hot coming out of that toaster oven and then it's time to get our skirts made up okay so while those jigs are getting baked in the oven we are gonna make some jig skirts and those jigs are done but we're just gonna let them cool down before we put any skirts on them so this is our round rubber and this is how it comes it's just like that you just cut these strips off of this rubber and you're going to cut about a five and a half inch strip and depending on how much how thick of a skirt depends on how much actual rubber you put together on that skirt and i'll show you what we're going to do in this video okay so what we're going to do is measure out five and a half inches and that's going to be the length of our skirt it doesn't have to be exact but just about five and a half inches. So that way we don't have too much or not enough. And there we go. And then you're just gonna cut it just like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take the piece that we just cut and use it as our guide and cut another piece of the black. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tear these down the middle doesn't have to be exact either, but just basically down the middle. And once again, I'm gonna tear this one down the middle as well. So these three pieces are gonna make up one jig skirt for me. I have found over time that I prefer a little bit thinner of a jig skirt. Sometimes people like really, really thick ones, but I've come to like a little bit thinner. And these three strands just like this end up being what I like. Okay, so to make the skirts, you need a jig skirt tool. This is the tool that I use. Um, there's different ones out there, but this is the one that I use. I've had this one for a long time. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that rubber band right there. We're gonna use a rubber band for this skirt today. You can wire tie, you can hand tie, um, but basically you take that rubber, rubber band right there and we're gonna put it onto these little metal pieces that stick out just like that. And then we take the tool and we open it up so that way it's open just like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our round rubber, which is right here, and we're going to feed it into that hole that we just opened up with the jig skirt tool, just like that. And we're going to, you want to layer this appropriately. So like I, I want this black and brown to kind of mix in with each other, but I want it to be predominantly brown, which is why I'm using two strips of brown and only one strip of black. I don't want it to be even. I want the brown to be the predominant color. So I'm gonna have more brown than black. We're gonna do our last strip of brown through there. And you wanna measure these things up so that way they're all about the right, same length. And then just pull on the other side, just like so. And we're gonna clamp it back down and pull it out. And now we have our skirt. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pull this rubber band up a little bit higher because you don't want it to be directly in the middle. You want it to be offset a little bit. So one side you want it to be a little bit longer than the other side. So as you can see, this round rubber, all these pieces are connected together and we need to separate them. So what we're gonna do is we don't just pull each individual strand like that. That's just gonna take forever. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this pair of pliers and we're gonna clamp it right down on top of that rubber, rubber band and you're gonna clamp it down real tight, just like that. And what I do is I put it between my legs just like so and then you're gonna grab one of these strands just like that and you gotta squeeze your legs tight together and you're gonna cut it loose and they're gonna come apart like that. We're gonna do it for all the different sides. So we got a few more to go. Just keep doing it.
All right, and that should be good to go. Now we have a few that didn't get all the way separated and those ones we'll just do by hand. Okay, so now we got our full skirt just like that. And it's looking just like we wanted it, that brown to be the most predominant color with that black mixed in. And then now all we gotta do is just thread this on to our actual jig. So right here we got our half ounce standard football jig. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna thread this thing on our jig skirt. We're gonna thread the skirt onto our jig head. And what you wanna do is you wanna have the short side down. This is our short side. And we're gonna have the short side down. And we're just gonna put it right through the middle. And you just literally just push it on through. Sometimes you have to kind of move it around so that way everything falls the way you want it. But that's what it's gonna look like once that jig skirt is on there. Let's get a closer look at it. And now we got a jig. Now all that's left is putting that weed guard in. So a minute ago I misspoke about my jig skirt. I actually like half of what I just put out to you guys. So basically you take the half that I just showed you and then half it again and the ratio is still exactly the same. But this is that thinner skirt that I was talking to you guys about. Um, they both will work. I've caught fish using the thicker skirt and the thinner skirt, I've just come to prefer the thinner skirt. So basically it's a quarter of each of those strips that I showed you when I was cutting everything. Now when it comes to putting your weed guards in, you wanna use a two-part epoxy. This is what I use, this is the Gorilla two-part epoxy. And you wanna make sure that it dries clear because sometimes you end up with a little bit of epoxy coming outside of that hole. So we're just gonna put this inside or pour this onto our plate and we want to make sure that we get even amounts of it and then we're just going to mix it all together I'm just gonna use this screw to mix it all together it's just something that was close most of the time I'll use like a toothpick or something like that but it doesn't really matter as long as you have something to mix it all together just like so you just want to get it mixed together because then it will start the chemical reaction to get it to harden Okay, so that should be mixed up good enough. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your weed guard, just this guy right here, you're gonna dab it in that mix up epoxy. Doesn't take a lot, just a little bit on the end of it like that. And then you're gonna take our jig and get this, you wanna make sure you get that skirt out of the way. Get the skirt out of the way. And then we're gonna just put the weed guard into the jig like that. You're gonna put it all the way in and that's gonna do it. And as you can see right there, it's nice and clean. And that is our finished jig. The only thing left to do is just wait for that weed guard to dry and then you have a jig that's ready to go. So as you can see, making your own football jigs isn't very difficult at all. You just have to have the lead and the different components in order to get all your pieces together. And then when it comes to the jig skirt, you wanna make sure that you kind of figure out what your personal preference is when it comes to how thick of a skirt you wanna do. I mean, the, the sky's the limit when it comes to different color combinations. I like to keep mine pretty simple, like brown and purple, brown and black, black and blue, green pumpkin, purple. Um, and I pretty much keep it at two colors. You can get as creative as you want. And a lot of people are really, really good at making their different, um, really intricate, colored jig skirts i just keep it pretty simple for myself i really like that black and brown or that brown and black color um, it's done really well for me i used the brown and black color before i started making my own jigs but as you can see it's not that difficult to do for yourself so i hope you enjoyed today's video uh, make sure to comment whether this is something that you're interested in in getting into yourself or um if you just wanted to watch it just because you want to see how a jig gets made. But just leave me a comment, give the video a thumbs up, and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate, appreciate that. If you're interested in any jigs similar to the ones that I made in this video, make sure to go check out my website, mattlunafishing.com, and check out the jigs that I have there. I don't have very many left, just a couple, but they're super cheap. I think they're like $2.50 a piece, so pretty cheap. Um, I got a few left, so go check that out. Hope you enjoyed today's video and please subscribe. Thanks again for watching.